and welcome back to my channel. It's nice to have you here for these conversations. We are at the Patio, a restaurant and lounge in Bukoto. And joining me today, I have the founder of 180 Degree Skincare Products, um, 180 Glow Wellness Spa, which has just opened up. And she also is the founder of Purple Rain Bespoke Men's Brand. So that's quite a lot to talk about. Susan Tumusime, welcome. Thank you. How are you? I'm okay. How are you, Crystal? I am good. It's not easy to track you down from what I know. No, it's not. I'm an enigma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all about the business. You're yes, like, these is. are the businesses. Yes. And you hide. Yes. Because you want the brand to speak for itself. Yes. Uh -huh. I think I like brand longevity. Mm -hmm. I, did, I did Google even a couple of brands, Calvin Klein, mm -hmm. uh, Versace. You might know the brands, but... People don't really know no. about the owners and their personal lives or too much of, of what goes on behind there. They just know the brands okay. or their, you know, the, the brands. Okay. So does that mean you're the kind of person, like when you enter a room, you kind of sit back and first get comfortable, watch yes. everyone else talking? Yes. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to get you to talk to me. Okay. <laughs> Let's well, see. it's nice to have you. Thank you so much for joining me. You look Thank lovely. You. Thank you. So tell me, you started with Purple Rain. Yes, I did. When was this? I started with Purple Rain in 2013. That mm -hmm. was uh, just me out of university, a year out of university. Oh, okay. Yes, for that year, I double did. Uh, I tried to do farming, mm -hmm. and it was too hectic <laughs> to do on a low budget. Okay. It was something that just needs... There's no way I think you can do farming without... A bigger budget mm, so it's, mm -hmm. that was a little bit tricky mm. then i tried to look for a job but i always just felt misplaced like i wasn't a corporate mm -hmm. like i wasn't a corporate so you tried to girl. do the eight to five yes. hours i tried to do I, I worked in a bank and then i tried hr mm -hmm. at a point and it just i don't know i think the monotony mm. of every day this is what i do every day that's the same thing and it just didn't work okay so i was online one time and I looked at a couple of things. I was online shopping and I placed an order and stuff arrived and I thought, wow, like this is interesting. Okay. You just order stuff from here where I am. By then, Jumia wasn't even there at the time. So I said, oh, what if I did this? This is 2013? Yeah, this is 2013. Okay. So I thought, oh, what if I did this for people like me who are in the offices? They work nine to five, nine to five, even Saturdays sometimes they work. And I order for them stuff, and they just I just deliver, and they pay me. Okay. And that's how it be. That's how Purple Rain began. So that was the genesis of Purple Rain. Yes. But you decided to do menswear. Yes, like I, sort of. It's like the men are the ones who really didn't have the time. Women enjoy shopping. Uh -huh. they, it's like casual, even if it's window shopping. Men just hate it. They don't like they, it. They go and they know they need socks, they need shirts, exactly. they need... Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I thought they were the easiest and quickest people for me to also make money from. Uh -huh. Because they actually bought and they didn't have the time. Mm -hmm. And for them, if it looks good, the quality is good, they'll pay. Mm -hmm. There's not too much... They don't haggle too much. Uh -huh. Us <laughs> <laughs> ladies uh -huh. love a good bargain. So uh -huh. the men are just like, it's good, price is good, that's it, okay. I'll take and it. Then, yeah, and then I think they are habitual consumers. Mm. They'll just buy from the same place all the time. <laughs> so I thought that was another okay. plus for the business. Mm -hmm. And somehow I started it with men's shoes, shirts, socks, ties. And then, of course, a couple of requests came in. Can I have this kind of jacket? Can it look like this? Mm. Can I have this kind of pants with this fabric? And shipping in these items for them would have been way too pricey. Mm -hmm. So I had to now search for tailors who could do the work. I could ship in the fabric. I could get them the fabric. They do the work. And I simply just do the same thing, deliver. Mm -hmm. So that's how Purple Rain Hub came in which was like a subsidiary of the online store. Uh -huh. And then it kind of took off way more than the store at a point. So many people were selling and mm -hmm. the same things. So this was a way for me to be different as well. I okay. could make things no one else has. Uh, shirts, trousers, jackets, all kinds of jackets. So it Bomber gave you a jackets. lot of freedom. Yes, it did. But did you struggle to get like good tailors? Because I know for oh a lot of people God. that's the issue. 
that was the issue. And especially I feel for like women's clothes since there's a lot of yes. flow, a lot of movement. It's easy. You don't yeah. see issues, but with men's because of the structure. Exactly. Uh -huh. And you can't make adjustments more than like once or twice. Once you go past the second time, you just need to throw that out, make another. Ooh. So adjustments have to be like a one or two times and you're done. Mm -hmm. So it was really tricky. There was a lot of training. Oh my God. <laughs> training, training and finding people who have, and most of the issues were finding people who have the character oh. that I had or the drive. So not the skill? No, because I feel like many tailors are good if you're literally like white on rice with them. Mm. Seated there, you're looking, you're vetting, this is not it, this is this. Then they'll give you something of quality. But the moment you relax, then they go back to their usual way of working. Mm. I, don't, I feel like in Like Uganda, working for five yeah, different things at yes, the same time. Yes, or just not showing up. Yeah, and unfortunately. There was also that. Not showing up, coming up with excuses, which I feel like many of our the workforce here is like that. Yeah. People here are really talented and really good, but they just don't show up mm -hmm. for themselves, for their job. They just won't show up. And follow through. I feel exactly. that's also people get started, but they don't make it yes, to the when end. when it gets tough, bye. Uh -huh. I'm now a carpenter. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> then tomorrow I'm making juice. Uh -huh. Like no one sticks it out mm. and then gets to the good parts. Yeah. Whenever it's difficult, everyone just kind of is like, ah, no, okay, I'll just do women's bags. Mm. Then that too, okay, I'll just, I'll sell hankies tomorrow. So it's never the longevity that business does require and that perseverance. Yes, I have yeah. to agree with you to some point. Mm -hmm. Okay, so take me back to school mm -hmm. and where you were born. You are Ugandan? Yes, I am. Uh-huh. Were you raised here? Yes. Born where? I was born in Mulago. Mulago Hospital. <laughs> You're a Mulago baby. I am a Mulago baby. <laughs> okay. And then where did you go to school? I went to school for primary. I went to Kampala Parents. I went to Lohana. And then secondary, Navisusa. And then I went to Nalia at a point, SS. And then I went to Macquarie College for HSE. Okay. And then I went to UCU. UCU. For university, yes. What and did you I do did there? Social work. Social work. And social administration. Okay. And then a year, you tried to work. Mm, it wasn't really working. It wasn't. Actually, the farm was the first thing I went to. I just escaped. So did you come straight out of university and yeah. say, I want to be a farmer? I want yes. to try this? Yes. Why? And just used all my savings straight at the farm. And I got land even behind Seta, still in Mukono. So I never left Mukono mm -hmm. once I graduated. Oh, <laughs> and it was the strangest thing. I think now when I look back, I realize maybe how everyone else was confused mm. about. They were wondering if I failed. Like, did she pass? No, wait, wait. But do you have like anyone in farming in the family? Uh, no. Like they are like very distant-ish uncles. So you never it even spent just... time on a farm growing up? Not really. <laughs> okay. But it was. It was one of those things that I don't know. I visited a couple of farms and would go for for Christmas mm. in Fort Potro and I just thought it was amazing that you could eat from your backyard. Mm -hmm. There was something about it that I just felt like this is my calling. Okay. I'm going to be a farmer. So all the, all the whole while at university, I thought I was going to be a farmer, like proper farmer. I saved my money because I used to do bracelets. And sometimes I used to make um, sandwiches for the guild canteen. Hey, <laughs> so we've been hustling from like yes, way back. Yes. Okay, so you'd make the bracelets yourself? Yeah, I'd make do the bracelets Do you still myself. make jewelry? Ah, uh, no, I don't have the time, but I try to do it for Papa Rain, okay. men's jewelry. Okay, okay. So, yeah, that was the hustle. And then I and said... And you made juice? I used to make sandwiches for offices. Now that is like S6 VAC before university. Okay. Yeah, so I went to university different. I had a fridge, I had all my stuff. <laughs> From your own money. <laughs> I remember no sponsors. We, no sponsors. <laughs> I remember in university, you know, you see you by then when I was there. It wasn't as bougie mm -hmm. as it is now. Okay. And I remember me and a couple of friends got to this hotel that was kind of abandoned. It wasn't far, but it was redundant. Mm. Like the, the university had taken over most of the, the spaces. So everywhere there were hostels everywhere. And this hotel was just empty. Okay. So we go and convince the guy, the custodian. If we can co bring students and fill up this place. Can you give us a semester like fee, not like a uh -huh. charging us as like, a month? Or yeah, like rooms, like rooms. Uh -huh. Yes. Give us a, a hostel fee. We'll bring people and fill up this entire place. 
Then he, I, we made a deal with him and said, but us who have, who have brought you that deal, we're paying half. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes sense, right? We are bringing you the clients. Uh -huh. So he's like, I'm going to talk to my boss, blah, blah, blah. So he talks to the boss and then he calls. My friend, it was a, a guy who was dating one of my friends. Mm. So he's like, they've called us, let's go. So we go and he's like, this is going to be the semester fee for other people and yours will be half. Okay. We filled up that hostel, that hotel, and turned it into a hostel. That was Rock Hill. I don't know if you've been to UCU Rock Hill. We were the pioneers <laughs> of Rock Hill Hotel. So, oh, and wow. And now it's a proper hostel. Okay. Look at you. You saw the opportunity. Yes. So this entrepreneurial spirit in you, mm. do you know where it comes from? Because clearly it's just part of you. I think I like to create. Mm -hmm. I've always been that kid who drew. I wrote my own novel. I used to write my own novels. Then outline a few pictures, go to school and tell people, you want to read the first edition? 500 shillings. <laughs> 200 second edition? Like, I was always mm -hmm. that kind of... Sometimes I would walk from school because I wanted a certain doll and they would give me, like, when I was... Uh, before I went to uh, Lohana, I was in Kitante. Okay. Because my mom was a teacher there. Okay. My mom is a teacher, so she she does uh, the, under the, pre, the primary section. So... And I was like, okay, they give us 1,000 every day to get a taxi. Actually, mm -hmm. it was 500 shillings by then because we used to live in Koto Flats. Okay. And I'm like, okay, if I, today, I'll buy myself the doll, then I just walk home. So I had to figure out how to get home so I could use my 500 shillings to buy the doll without asking for more money because they would ask me, where is the money that I gave you? Mm. Then I was that kid washing cars for money, for for like, I don't know, just... You just want wanted to, money. I wanted money. Hey. And I didn't like that, asking me what I'm going to do with my money. Hey, so I you wanted like your that. own money that you could do whatever you wanted with. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because if I asked every weekend, my dad would always be like, but how do you need money every weekend? As if you're an adult. Mm -hmm. And this is vacation. Weekend is when you go for ice cream, for movies. But I think parents don't get that you need to do this every weekend. I'm mm -hmm. home like the whole week. You beg once for every three months. Yes. And that's enough. You've seen your friends. What's the problem? <laughs> and I just, I was like, okay, if I worked for it, then you don't tell me how to use it, right? I, I can do what I want. Good point. Instead of the whole, you want another shoe, you want another this, then you want this. Uh, so I was like, if it's mine, you don't get to ask me what it's for, right? Mm -hmm. So I figured working for money was easier than if I have to like beg for it and come up with something. I felt like that was exhausting. And convince you and all of that. Exactly. So independence I is also very important to you. Yes, it is. Yes, very yes, important yes. to you. So you finished at UCU and you said you immediately got land in the same yes. area. Yes, I convinced some so, guy who was in, uh, he was uh, uh, at the time, uh, the guy who I was dating, he was his cousin, mm -hmm. like cousin brother, brother or something like that. And he was in Malaysia. He went okay. to university in Malaysia. But he so, had land. Yeah, he had land and he wasn't using it. So I asked to lease it for mm. 100k a year. Okay. And he said, well, yeah, I'm still here for a couple of years until I graduate. And even when I've graduated, I don't have a plan for it yet. And it and makes then, sense for you to be using the land in that time. Yes, okay. and I, I was the one who, it was a forest, like a real thicket forest. Oh dear. I had to bring, I had to bring tractors and look for workers. I went to Kayunga, mm -hmm. got those uh, prisoners. Because uh -huh. it's to cheap come labor, 5k. <laughs> yes, 5k. <laughs> got those guys to come and clear and dig. Like it was a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And I sold it to him like that as well. Like by the time you want to use it, it will be clean, clear, and you wouldn't have incurred all those costs. I'm the one who put there the water. Up to this day, the meter is in my name. Oh. So pull their water, I think electricity. So I was basically also helping him improve the land by the time you wanted to use it and i'm doing farming which is harmless the land would just be clean i can see how convincing you are you're like no 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 because because and you're like okay fine use the land use yes the land. i think it was so like, what did you decide to do what was your plan for the farming mm -hmm. it was okra okra yeah there were these guys where i was how i got that idea was when i was in straight talk Oh, there was that first. Wait, wait, wait. What? Ah, how, long? how long were you with Straight Talk? I was in Straight Talk for S4, for S4 back. Okay. And I was a volunteer. Mm. So I used to, my part was to read the letters and reply. And they were lots and lots of letters. You know, that Straight Talk paper mm -hmm. where people can ask, they have someone they can talk to about 
things that they can't ask their parents. Yeah. Adolescent, sex, all these kinds of things, boyfriend, girlfriends, periods menstruation, all of it. Isn't that pretty mature though for yeah, you? Because you were for back. Yeah, they would give me the ones that were to do with like relationships. So I have a crush. They would give me certain things. Uh -huh. And others I had, I would ask, how do you answer this? Mm -hmm. How do you answer this? So I would reply. Mm -hmm. My part was to reply the letters. So oh, those were like the funny, funny days. I think I was even in a straight talk paper one day being an advocate for virginity. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Uh -huh. So yeah, it was uh, that was that was um, in my S4 vac, and I was the straight talk office was sort of in proximity to an office at that. That by then it was Mashamba. Right now it's agro forest, uh, agro agriculture something something. The name changed, mm -hmm. but Mashamba was an export company. Is an export company in Uganda where you, they they take fresh produce and export to people in other countries, the countries that suffer winter and things uh, like that and can't access this. Yes, yes. The UK, the US. So their standard is obviously very high. Yes. And they pay a little more than if you just took your things to Nakasero. Mm -hmm. They pay a little more, but you'd have to literally, the standard of the type of produce You they must take. match it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I think just being close to them, then one time I don't know how I stumbled into their the place mm -hmm. and it just convinced me about farming i don't know if it was i can't remember where this but farming that's thing, where it kind of came from i i, I think okra then okra was the one where they were like it's the easiest because when you read on it and the types of soils it's not it's a it's almost like a weed uh, even the way it's it not grows. a fussy plant yeah it's not a fussy plant you can yield i think every you you harvest every three day almost every three days it grows that rapid, they take the, the younger okra, because mm -hmm. okra can grow really long, yeah. but those ones apparently are very bitter. Mm -hmm. So they take the really small, like an inch, like a finger, they would always say, use your finger. And I would be like, what's an inch? What's a what? How do you <laughs> measure? Do I go measuring everything? Like, finger? Just use your finger, okay? Use this finger. Okay, this part maybe. Yeah, like use this part, that's what we are going to take. Okay. So I'm like, okay, so it was that or chilies. Mm -hmm. Red chilies, yes, the yes. red peppers. Uh -huh. Those are like the highest exports because the countries that have winter need to keep, you know, warm. warm so yes. they do take chili a lot. But okra seemed less fussy. Okay. Because so, they're like, ah, it will just grow. Uh, and I'll and just come I, and dig. <laughs> and then I'd never heard of even okra. It sounded, I was like, is this Nigerian? <laughs> and they're like, no, people eat it here. People use it for all kinds of things. So I go to the market to also look at what it what it looks like, mm -hmm. how it tastes. And one time my mom was like, you're going to sell things you've never eaten. Today you're going to eat it. And it was bitter. And I was like, and sticky. I will, yeah, I will sell this, but I will not be eating this. No I eggs. like food, but that's the one thing I have failed. Mm, I think it's that sticky, but I don't know what that texture is. No, it's like French beans. Like French beans. <laughs> <laughs> no, they've lied. <laughs> Oh no, uh -huh. it's not. It's just yeah. And the way I didn't eat, I didn't eat it, but I sold it. And then uh, I remember, oh god, okra was farming was hard. Let's just say farming. So what happened? What went wrong? Ah, first of all, I convinced it my was aunt, a weed. It was supposed to just keep giving that's and giving. That's the problem. Oh. The farm was in ginger. So it's in ginger. The farm is in ginger. Yeah, there were there was a farm. No, there was one in Seta. That's yes. the one I started that, after. Oh university but um of course to make more i convinced my elder brother and i told him you know we need to get into this thing this thing has money so first, it's like, wait so you started the first farm in yeah, center yes did you first wait to see how yeah. it was going the and cloud it, was... it started growing and i was like this thing is really does oh, grow so like it was that. working yes okay it really was growing and then i convinced him for us to i had another friend and i'm like can you lease me land? Mm -hmm. Gave him the same story and everything. He's like, really? Cool, cool. I have a, our village is in, in Jinja. It's not so far off the road. I can take you. You look at it. You see if it works for you. We went. I saw and I conquered. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, like, this yes. going, yeah, this is going to work for me. <laughs> so we had the same arrangement. I would lease uh -huh. from him. Then, of course, you talk to a couple of people who would potentially be working and harvesting. Mm. Now, the issue that I, I literally set myself up with this farming thing, how was I going to make it from, from uh, Seta to Ginger on harvest days and pick up the produce with no car, no money? 
and bring the things to Kampala by 7 a.m. And you said this is supposed to be like every three days or exact, like every week. Exactly, like thrice a week. <sighs> I okay. literally set myself up because okra, when you transport it, even any fresh produce, when you that's why you see those those, those guys arrive in the market like by six. They're there. Yes, they because, travel. Yeah, when you transport it, when the sun is up, oh. the heat makes it soft and sort of not fresh anymore. Yeah. And remember, I was supplying to Mashamba that is really strict. And I, long story short, I <laughs> shot myself in the foot. It required a lot of physical manpower. And this is the thing about farming. They say it's both capital and labor intensive. Yes. But you really need to have figured out the labor thing. Yes. Because you can have all the money. And if you just want to pay like mama, mama, you know, mama Naka here, my neighbor, and the other auntie there, it's not going to work. If you're going to do it by six, so that means you have to be harvesting like the night before, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Basic, not even the night, like 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. because it has to be as fresh from the... So after straight from that it. into the truck, yeah. straight to... Uh -huh. And then someone needs to be present while all this is taking place because you want it to be done in a, in a way that's sensitive to the fruit without damaging it. Mm. So someone needs to be present to make sure the workers are doing this well. Ah, it was a lot. And then asking people on the farms to be present, like me, Susan, imagine how I look like after uni. And I'm like, where are you? <laughs> he wasn't going to probably take me seriously. Like this Kaga. Mm -hmm. Like we do this all the time. What are you saying? Yes. Because I think I, I don't know what I'm doing. Yes, I wasn't commanding enough for also the, the type of the type of work that I was doing. Farming because of the, the kinds of people you end up working with. They're not you don't work with very young people. Yes. And people who are going to do this plowing and blah 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 like uh, uh, slightly elderish women and men yes. and the command that is needed to make sure these workers sometimes you're strict and you're tough and you're like I'm not giving you today's money. Blah 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 and there's a lot of issues you end up dealing with. This one the husband has refused to come to work like I was too young to to probably. even understand those dynamics. Mm -hmm. So whenever these things would come up the other worker didn't work because the husband has what said this or the other one you don't know where they are there's involved sometimes it involves looking for the workers like where are they or getting others quickly it needs someone on ground no, at farming you need to be there and you need to have people you trust who are fully yes. invested it was uh, that was wow. something it was i think it was uh my calling surely came to early i think but, but it's I, I think eventually you'll we'll go back i will you will go back. I am trying to set myself. It was myself. just not the right time. It wasn't the right time. Ah, it wasn't the right time. I will definitely. That's where I feel like people should retire into farming. I feel like it's just like you're eating from the backyard. Yeah. I feel like there's something about that. Just like eating off the ground. You don't wake up thinking money, this, there's a cow, mm -hmm. milk. Milk can make you all kinds of things. Cheese, what? Exactly. I just feel like there's something about that that is, that is so... I don't know, it just feels so beautiful. Yes. Yeah? Yes. That your land is literally feeding you. Exactly. Then mm. this whole uh -huh. market I have list. To prepare for this <laughs> smoothie. But if I had my avocado tree, <laughs> you'd be making it at home. <laughs> so so yes. you were burnt nicely, Bambi. I was just tired. I was like this small. I was mm. small, but that was, I was worn out you were stressed you i were... was worn out that was like was the it most... easy to give up though ah it took me a while to push 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 then i just thought no this is not for me right now it's not worth it so yeah my dad came in and said oh are you letting it go i said i think i'm letting it go like so i told my bro you know i know you had invested but wow this needs like a lot of uh, it needs way more than i i thought mm. and there were so many uh, things I couldn't manage at my level where I was, even yeah. of expertise, managing workers, and they're older than me. Mm. The guy would be like, they say, ja. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, say, the gula mata. And where you're like, you know, managing the tempers, and then sometimes the work, you're like, okay. Managing people. Exactly. Mm. That was just not it. And then my dad said, okay, um, I can take over the leases because mm. I. I was already in them. 
the one at least in uh, in Seta. The one in Jinja was like, no, 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 no. You left it because bro. yeah, I would the connection even of how I got stuff there. I had to convince a guy at Kayunga stage, to, like a shop, to be receiving things for me. The taxi stops, the things there. Then I had my border guy from uh, my university days who had convinced at six whenever the things arrive at the stage, you get them. You also go to Seta and they give you the other boxes <laughs> and then you meet me in Kamocha by 6.30. So at times, you know, border guys, phone off, you're like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> for heaven's sake, you have one job, one job Just only. Just one job. Find me at 6.30. But you know those things. So at some point, I think um, I explained the, the difficulties that were in it. Mm. And then my dad took it over and decided he would use the land for his uh, chicken project. Okay. So, so they went into it with my brother, and that's now where I started to look for the job. Okay. Then I didn't. You are like, uh, uh, this I'm life, like, this life of family. Maybe people are right. I should just do the job thing. Hmm. People, everyone, maybe people are right because everyone did think how it was a bit. People would be like, "This is not graduate. Where is she?" Like I think they thought the they way could not understand me. what you were doing, right? Yeah, because I couldn't just keep coming to Kampala every now and then. Mm -hmm. I'm using all my money for the workers. So, I'm so you like, liter literally disappeared. I disappeared from everybody. and I think people wondered what exactly if I had dropped out. I think, I don't know, uncles, what were you thinking? Well, where was I? <laughs> but anyway, everyone thought, I don't know what has happened to her. Like, where is, where is she? Mm. And I was there seated with my 4.2 GPA, by the way, just on the farm managing uh, prison workers. Mm -hmm. Then he took over it. My dad took over it, did his chicken thing. I tried to now start looking for a job. Of course, the other usual, where, where have you been for the past like one year, one, one and a half? Mm -hmm. Of course, explaining. I remember the job that I got, the interview, the, in the interview, the, my boss asked me, but if you've been used to handling that kind of money, I know farming, they just pay you like they're on the go. Will you actually have the temperament for a corporate job to wait at the end of the month for a salary? And then it's not like you're receiving like five millions just like this. Mm, will you have that, like the humility for the job? And I was like, yes. And I was also convincing him the way I convince everyone for mm. things. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready I for this. Good. Yeah, if I've even done that and I'm here and I moved it by myself, doing all those things. Imagine what I could do here. I could revolutionize this place. <laughs> The guy was like, this chick. Meanwhile, <laughs> this guy was supposed to be interviewing me for a bank job. Like, you will be working in this HR. Okay. And I was so unhappy that he did that. He just kept me for himself and I thought... <sighs> and I would dream about the bank jobs. And my dad would keep on telling me, I picture you in a, in a jack, in a suit, which is a skirt. You know those skirts for those bank girls? <laughs> And very nice fitted skirt and you know and that's uh -huh. how I picture you and and I picture you sometimes speaking for MTN like you're the PR saying no this was not our fault and I convinced everybody that we're oh not my god <laughs> pressure much and then well I didn't get that job of the bank I was now in the mm -hmm. HR yeah mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't like it honestly I didn't I think I didn't like it. It wasn't about the job because I feel like even uh, business is like that. You mm -hmm. start somewhere. You don't start all the way up. So I think I wasn't, it, it wasn't just for me. And I feel like I've always known that. That mm. somehow I always knew that. I don't know, the corporate world it wasn't really... Uh, career people would come and give us talks at uni and I would still keep thinking. No. Yeah, they would say like, this, you want this place? Or this place, and it always just seemed like, yes, but there was those other things that were thinking, oh, maybe not. Okay, maybe HR, okay, HR, okay, okay. HR, I think is Let for me. Let me try this. Yeah, so HR was where I thought, okay, HR, marketing, okay, can do those. How long? How long? Did How long did you do it? Eight months, of which the second day, I was already writing my exit plan. <gasps> By the second day, by the second you day, were sure? I was sure. I remember we had a meeting where they gave all the new staff diaries. And that's where we were supposed to write our targets mm. and uh, things that we would be appraised on okay. every month mm -hmm. as the new team and during our orientation. And on the second day, the diary, I just wrote, this is my exit plan, <laughs> underline. <laughs> no. 
that was where I was like, <laughs> no, this is not. I'm going to be wasting this guy's. This is not it. This is not the life. Like I, I just, I don't know. It wasn't coming. One thing I will for sure say that I think about the corporate world that may not work, ness that maybe didn't work also necessarily for my personality. Mm. Is that many times when you go into corporate spaces, they already have a way they do things. Uh -huh. So if I come in into say sales, which was what they first gave me. And you want me to sell a human resource manual to a bank. Mm -hmm. This is me at 23. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm selling a human resource manual to a bank on, um, you know, HR, uh, how the human res this re human resource companies work is that they are the ones who will vet for you new employees. The, the bank, yes. may not, the, the staff may not have time to do this. Yes, yes, so yes. they outsource these things to like Ernest and Young. Mm -hmm. So it was yeah. a version of Ernest and Young where okay. I was working. So, this you're supposed to look for the new business, yeah. But I think it was also mismatched. Like, I think but they already my, have their systems. You already have your systems. So sometimes, then at the end of the month, you're asking me where are the new businesses. You didn't give people our manuals enough for them to. The phone should be ringing. Like you should be on the phone the whole day calling different like companies. Mm. Oh, we can hire for you stuff. We never. So I would come up with these ideas. Like, let's see in the newspapers which people are like those scandals let's take advantage of the scandals like if this and this is going on in a bank something happened maybe their staff is not that equipped mm -hmm. so we we come up with something oh now that's the boss supposed to come up with like a manual and we go and pitch to them during their crisis management time of how we can help like the staff be more competent yeah or we pit them against each other i mean <laughs> this bank is doing well because mm -hmm. this is how we can help you even surpass these guys. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. And he would, I think, think, does this girl think we're in the movies? Like, I think he was also so, because he was really, I mean, it was like talking to my dad. Because mm. he was so really he's like, also like, does she not think we know what we're doing? That yes, we haven't been like doing this for that. Of, over, all, over the ideas are also too... Uh, too out there for him. Yes. Mm -hmm. They prefer the get on the phone, call, mm -hmm. ask for a meeting. I come for the meeting, ah. then I pitch. Mm -hmm. That's how it was. Mm -hmm. So it was like, get me the meetings. Here I was using another approach because I was on those calls. Uh -huh. And people would just keep, we are busy. Oh, we'll call you back. We'll give you an answer. Those usual generic so calls. So you were looking at a different way to get in the door. Yes. Really. Like, let's get in with whichever way we can yeah and that's what i'm good at i've mm. noticed is yes i just get in there whether Once i know what in, i'm doing i will start talking out. right yes i'll figure it out so it was one of those okay i guess i get i make the call but i am on the phone the whole day the whole day mm. from eight it, you're not supposed to be like seated just you're either writing proposals because you've gotten a place that has asked you for the, your proposal or you are supposed to be getting him the meetings or getting the, the business so it was more of a or b and you couldn't it's like a, a fine line like you can't shed there another color it's no, but also, I think I also understand I think you're an action oriented person yeah you like to actually do things because, I mean, for me, misery is you make me sit there and do reports. That is misery. Like, do reports and this and that. I'm like, no, no, no. I have to be doing, creating. Mm. And I think that was also your thing. You're like, yes. let's, let's, you know? Yes. Let's do something about it. This is not working exactly. Like, yeah, we try something else. Yeah, but I've told you what to do. Go so, on, get on the phone. Day two. Exit plan. I'm like, I will not manage. But at least you hung in there for eight months. I did. And I really did. I really did try. But when Papa in the store started kicking off and I thought, I could be Amazon of Uganda. <laughs> That's what I was thinking then. Uh -huh. Like, I think my dreams are, way, like, I think my, my things are, like, way out there. Then I start to do my groundwork here. So when did you start Papa Rain then? Then. While you were working? Yes, I was just like, ah, no, 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 no. Mm. At least what I have here, I have a laptop, there's internet. Mm -hmm. I will figure out my plan B from here. Because I needed something to also make me come to work. I mean, I would wake up in the morning and come up with all kinds of things. Oh, I have to today, I'll be in at nine. Mm. My son says, are acting up, I'm not a morning person, you know, this, this, this. At some point, my dad would make jokes like, you go in at the time of the CEO. <laughs> You know you're an, empl like you're an employee, right? You're supposed to be in by 8, meaning mm. you're supposed to be leaving home at 7 or 6.30. Yeah. How do you go in at 9? 
like you're not serious and I just didn't have the drive until when I thought okay how can I give him what he wants and I get what I want at and the we same time. yeah and then we figure out a way we you know so I had to jumpstart myself because if I'm not being given like that room to kind of fix things or create or then you're just like stifling all my energy so I'm like now where am I going I'm just going to be like copy paste copy paste copy paste no I'm so happy that you figured it out yeah. and it didn't crush your spirit because sometimes it crushes you. yes it does mm. actually leaving if you really really know this is not it leaving early enough because at times when you stay in long enough you kind of just get used uh -huh. now for me I think I just thought Okay, he has internet. He has things I don't have. There was a laptop. Mm -hmm. There was one desktop. There was internet. I didn't have that. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, it's providing that I will come in because that's there. And I know my lunch break. Eh? I am just researching ideas. So I would read on all kinds of things. Imagine then I actually thought of the spa, not even Papa Rain. I thought I'm going to have a spa. Really? Oh, it's going to be bougie. Yes. How far back is this? This is just opened the wellness spa. I've just opened it now, but it was even the dream I had even before. Wow. So I thought, ah, okay, I'll go do his work. And then on my lunch break, I can start searching ideas on what I can invest in, what I cannot. So it, would, it used to always wake me up and I'd be like, I couldn't wait for my lunch break so that I could read and what. So these guys would go out for lunch, I would stay in okay. and read. What's a good balance? You're like, yes. let me get this work out of the way. Yes. You do it. Yes. So I'll you spend could the whole on. morning making the calls. Uh -huh. If not, I'd be out going to uh, UN, going where, dropping proposals, talking, and I'll drop all these proposals, I'll drop the contacts, I'll do his part. Mm -hmm. Then at lunchtime, to uh, maybe about three, I'll do that. Then I guess these are the times we're either just winding up or having our usual meetings and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, let me let me do this. So that made sense. Yeah, you. so it would give me that, because I'd be looking forward to the, getting onto the laptop and doing my stuff. And then that's how it started. So... When I found out now, I, after I placed the order and things like that, of course, the spa was too expensive. I remember looking for space somewhere and they told me 3M per month. And I thought, is this normal? <laughs> like, people pay 3 million? What? And that was way back. So you can imagine whenever I was 3M what people now, pay now. Like maybe mm -hmm. 5 mm -hmm. or 10. So I thought, eh, is this normal? He was like, what did you think? I thought, 500. He said, madam, you want a whole at 500,000? Not serious, madam. You're not. I, it was an Indian guy, and I thought, what? I don't even have. So you're like, maybe I haven't thought this through completely. Yeah, I said, ah, oh, this is not for me. This is not for me. Okay, let me get to something else. So that's how the online shopping thing came about. And when it started kicking off, my friends nearby, around Kololo, here, there, I'd go deliver. Like at lunchtime, I'd always tell them I take orders in the, the whole morning mm -hmm. up to. 10. Whenever it's delivered up to 10, 11 is mm -hmm. what I'll deliver okay, for okay. the day. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to place your order in by then. So whenever things would come, yeah. Your lunchtime, you dash out. Uh -huh, I dash out, I use it to make deliveries and I'll come back. Mm -hmm. So at some point it grew and I needed now way more supply. Yeah. And I didn't have the capital to, 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 to purchase these things. So I thought, how about if I convinced people who do this, who go, I know from buying these things and interacting with a lot of basubuzi, Many of them by then were not that smart, they were not that internet savvy. Yes, yes. So I yes. thought if I could bring that on board, uh -huh. they have the stock, I come, I start taking your pictures, or I get in touch with them. If they can, we can trust where I take a certain number of products, I pay 50% upfront, mm. then I sell the rest, come back, establish a relationship, I could move for him his stuff. Okay, okay. So I got a couple of them who ended up becoming my friends. Okay. And that's what I started doing back then before it became a thing now so i'll just do that do that so of course people would be like huh okay where who is your sub where are you getting these things from blah 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 can you get me this and then those um uh, requests for certain types of suits certain types of this started coming in mm -hmm. then i did the same thing okay if i can find people show them what i want the quality the the cut how it's supposed to look like and then they do the ex they do the work if I get, got people did that, mm, I think I can also add on the suits. Okay, okay. And then that's how this other one also started. And then now we are going to 10 years. Oh my goodness. All right. Purple rain. 
So, you said Purple Rain evolved as well over time. Yes, it did. Have you ever gone to a point where like, you opened a store and opened yes. a boutique of your own? And mm -hmm. uh -huh, When was that? Yes, I actually did open a showroom. I think now it's been four, year, four years ago. Four years. Where is that? It's in Bukoto. In Bukoto? Yes, like um, behind Kabira, Bukoto Kisasi. Uh -huh. As you go a little bit ahead, there will be a building on your left. We're at double story building. There's a deluxe supermarket at the bottom. Mm -hmm. We are on the third floor. Okay. And that's still doing well. Yeah, that's still doing okay. Of course, after two hits of COVID, mm -hmm. and by then, when the first COVID came about, I was pregnant. Oh, okay. And I was at home thinking, oh my God, I'm going to be a housewife now. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, that cannot happen. I was like... Because you remember in COVID, we were you like had to sitting. shut down. Yes. Yeah, we were sitting every day. And I was like, what if Papa Rain doesn't come back, out of come back from this? We were not working. There was, remember, buildings in town were being locked. There was yes. actual police. Yes. You had to pay to open, to work every day. To get any suit out I had prior to that lockdown, I had to literally pay every day. The guy got in to do some work. Wow. 50,000. He works, they just, he op enters, they just lock him in. So the people were inside there working, but they would be locked in. I hope no government guys, you know. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> but that's how the guys well, this were this is working. a long time ago. Yeah, like, this is past. We heard about forgiven. this. <laughs> Actually, this could be a conspiracy theory. It may or may not have oh, happened. No. Exactly. <laughs> yes. But yeah, that's how it was working. I'll just pay the guy and it was expensive. Expensive, yes, to work. A I mean, day. Imagine a week, you can't make a suit in like four days. Mm -hmm. There are so many hands that make clothes or that yes. make us at least something as complicated as a suit. Yeah, so many. The person who puts the buttons, the cutting, the this, there were so many. I thought, and you couldn't even get all of them in, of course. I couldn't. So one guy had to come in every day and do this, and I would pay 50k every day. If a week is already how much? And the suits were That's already paid for. 300. Exactly. They already paid for. And people in COVID were expecting, if anything, discounts. Yes. And I just thought, is this business done? Like, am I done? Because it's what I had invested everything into for the past. By then, this is now like, what, three years ago? Mm. That's all I had done for. Now, Papa is making 10 years. So I had already given everything for the past. I don't know how many years. All everyone knew me of was Papa Rain. Papa Rain, Papa Rain. And I was and like, you were sitting at home thinking, yes. oh my God, this might be the end. This might be the end. How am I going to survive this? Then we get out and the landlady is like, you guys still need to pay because even me, it's not like they're telling me they have waived my taxes. Yes. I'm still she paying, still so at least to. you guys need to pay half. And by then my fiance was like, and I was just depressed, depressed. I was heavy up to here going looking for people's clothes because yeah. when the buildings were closed some of the workers had taken the work to other people's workshops and then sometimes those people would lock like police they would think they would hear police is coming it's going to be inspecting the area and they would lock so your stock was all over the all place over. and here i am pregnant i'm like i have to do something i will use my belly and say i'm going for my maternity my maternity what I'm doing in the middle of town for maternity, but I will figure it out. I was literally going belly all the way up to there, running around looking for my clothes. Oh, wow. And some clients were just not even, I don't know if it was a pressure, the stress and everything. They were just like, fine, I want my stuff. What they me? didn't want to know. They didn't want to know. So I was like, okay. <sighs> then I also hadn't thought about things like that with a business that is, a, I, would, I would say, a luxury to a certain, to a good degree. Mm -hmm. Papa Rain was more of a luxury brand. Yes, yes. So I thought, hmm, now wedding parties, uh, people are just doing one in groom best man. Mm -hmm. Those are two suits. Then mm -hmm. some people are just completely canceling weddings. Yeah, yeah saying, completely. We'll just do there after. were no parties, no events, no yes. weddings, no. And there was no plan. They were not giving anyone a reimbursement. There, were no, there was no plan for you, the entrepreneur, like what happens then for you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they gave us posho and beans. Oh, not everyone also. But I don't know what that was supposed to also do for me. There was no plan. Figure it out. Exactly. Ah, there was, it was like it was like one man for himself, God for us all. So I thought, mm, okay, okay, this is definitely not what I would call 
uh, this is not a, a consumable mm -hmm. that can sustain a crisis. Yes. And now figuring that out, then heavy what this you was looking for things. Your pregnancy, Bambi. Yes. <laughs> I was like, okay, I need to do something. Did you at some point just say, okay, fine, let me just leave this here for now. I'll come back to it no. later. No. No, Sometimes because you have no, to do that. No one gave me the break. I had, to, I had to look for people's work. Yeah. I had to hand it in and still do fittings, find a way of opening the shop. Mm -hmm. So people who had gone forward with their weddings, they had the, the, the passes. I didn't have a pass, but they were sort of expecting me to get one because I have your stuff. It was like, I must say, crises bring out also the worst in us human beings. Mm -hmm. And I would say I really dealt with that Part a lot mm -hmm. where you had to figure it out. They didn't, I mean, they're figure like, I out. paid you, I want my things. Yes, because it was like also them, much as yes, in the moment I thought human beings are nasty. I'm like, I'm, I'm not saying I'm, uh, I'm using my uh, pregnancy as an excuse, but I am. Mm -hmm. What if I drop this kid right here and now? Are you going to help me deliver this baby? <laughs> but then I also feel like they were scared. Mm. They didn't have a way out. Who am I going to look for right now to make me suits? Yeah. When I know she has them, at least I did my one fitting. Yeah. She has them, if she could find a way. So it was like everyone was just pushing for what serves them at the time. Everyone and I think was everyone surviving. was just putting their frustration out on whoever they could. Exactly. Mm. There was a lot of uncertainty and it needed to go somewhere. Yeah. Service providers must have gotten the worst of, of COVID. Yeah. Because that was some... That was like uh, an apocalypse with zombies. <laughs> huh? That's, that was like the walking oh, so dead. Yes, yes. Eish, it was like the walking dead, I don't know. <laughs> so I was one of those service providers at the time who had, I, would, I would say had very few clients who were, you know what, we'll, do, we'll talk about it after all. We can sit down and re-strategize. There were few of them who were like that. Most of them, I remember there was this one guy who the worker who was working on him mm -hmm. at the time when the, all this happened stays very, very, very far. Yeah. And she had given the work to one of the workers who I think stayed nearer to her. Now, she couldn't come to find the work because she had no pass, no what, and for her, she was very far. Uh -huh. I had to start retracting her steps and I would keep trying to explain to the client, I am retracting your work, I'm going to get it. You, need, you just need to give me some time, then I, let me give you a date when you can come and do the fitting. Because I had too many strings to pull, too many things to, to pull just for me to even come in. I had to get a day close to my um, maternity, you know, they were, they were weekly. Get that day, go those, then use that day, then blah, blah, blah. So I had to literally pull so many strings. And one time, I remember he just said, ah, ah, na yeba nag, ah, kuma I don't know if it was to me or to the situation. Oh, dear. And I thought... Sorry. This is a little bit overboard. Yeah, it's a considering bit much. Because what? No all one in this is together. doing this to you. It's also happening to me. Yeah. I'm actually putting my help really on the have, line yeah, to don't. sort the issue. Yeah, no. It I, was it was overboard. That was like the worst. I think that was the one worst, the worst thing I would say I experienced during COVID because yeah. my pregnancy was like a breeze. I Even hate to say this. I think human beings are inherently selfish. Oh, it's God. me, myself, my world, what matters exactly. to me. Oh, sorry. That was, that was rough. Yep. Is that when you started thinking about skincare products? I'm done. Actually, I first thought, I'm done with purple rain. What? 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 Like, people wouldn't care if I'm putting my health on the line. For what? You paid me one million for a suit? Like, that means you own me, like, to this degree? I thought, mm, I think I'm done with purple rain. Then I just, after I said I'm getting all this work out of the way, I'll close this place. Wow. And of course everyone was like, no, blah, blah, blah. And I thought, mm, I was, my spirit was so done. Because even the day I went in to deliver, I remember I was 40 weeks. And I kept trying to push till the 42. You want the baby out even before? I wanted it out, the baby out. But then I was scared of giving birth. It was always like one of those phobias. Mm. And then I wasn't ready. The shop, I kept thinking, who is going to work? What's going to happen when What's I have going this to baby? Happen? Like, I will for sure be done. So I, was, sure you, I was just your, like, I'm not ready. Your fiancé then, husband, I don't know, was like, he was like, hello? Yes. I come to earth, we are having the baby, and I'm thinking, so we're going for that last, one of those last uh, ultrasounds, and, I'm, and they're, they're like, oh, the cord is around the neck. So we need to do this, this, like, ASAP. Out. And I thought, um, you mean ASAP? Maybe wait for, like, next week. He's like, madam. Did you just hear what I said? 
you're coming in this week. It was like a Monday. Uh, they can literally he send you me, home. He told me you're coming, choose a day. So I tried to choose like Saturday, like a day that gave me time to, to try prep. and finish. And then I had not done any of the mental work of being pregnant and going to have a baby. Oh I had my. not had a moment. So I thought, okay, I can now use, it. maybe I'll use this week. So if I, we, we have the baby Saturday, I can use this week to finally maybe come, pray, um, get myself ready, and then but he said... But you know, said, sometimes you will never finish what needs to be done. Yeah, and said, the baby's coming. <laughs> the baby's coming. He said Thursday. So the baby came Thursday. Yeah. And you, you were forced to stop. Was I? Because oh, I was that tell person me. who was on the hospital bed after, on the phone, with calls, guys, I'm not available. There was no one who they were going to call. I was the only employee at the time. So you didn't even have someone else to help you deal no. with all that? No. So I had actually one person, mm -hmm. but he was just thrown into the like, deep end. Mm -hmm. So you're, he, you're at home, but you're on phone the whole time almost. Mm -hmm. Now this person has come, where were, his, where were his things again? Check here, check here, check here. They look like it's like, it's like I pack them, I put them here. Okay. This person, da, 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 where do I go? Who the, this is the number. Call them. They're going to bring deliver the shoes. Then you do this, this, this. So it was like I was on phone working, but he was physically there. And then after that, three weeks after delivering, I'm back at work. And it was like, what in the world? I cannot work like this for the rest of my life. Like, I'm done with this. So that's then, when you were like, uh-uh. Yeah, during actually COVID, the first one, is when I started thinking of what else I could complement Purple Rain with. Mm, that is a necessity. Yes, yes. So that I don't have to be on this, I don't have to work under this level of this stress pressure. and pressure mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. Something that would almost sell itself. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have to be like a mad person. And then somehow there was an idea of candles, there was an idea here, an idea there, and then I thought, somehow we ended up into soap. Okay. I know ladies love to look good and what not. What if I made soap and um, complemented it with maybe whoever bought a suit or what has like a gift care package for the ladies, because I know they're the ones who keep coming back to ah, buy these other things. Okay. Or they would end up bringing their, their husbands or their fiancés to make the suit, something that could sort of generate all to work for all and i was brainstorming so, and then first candles and i thought ah but it's not a necessity yet again at least at the time when i was thinking about these things it wasn't on the list so then i thought okay soap mm -hmm. small small things like that so i started reading into how to make soap how to you know scent it what are the other the types and then there were these organic soaps you can make using oils and butters and here we have a lot of shea butter oh. a lot of coconut butter we have quite a couple of things and then I thought, mm, okay, what can I do with that? And then started going t downtown, wherever, all over the place, trying to look for ingredients and first see what was what was here mm -hmm. that I can use. I mm -hmm. know there's sheer butter, but what else what that else? can complement? Mm -hmm. So I start walking around, driving again, looking for all this. And I thought, okay, here in Uganda we clearly have one, two, three, four. We have like sheer butter, like coconut oil, maybe. Um, Bob Keno and ah, that's it. Okay. Okay, where can I find these other things? And what would be the cost? So I start costing it out. Uh, then what, how do you mix? So I would make my experiments and give my friends and my parents and they use and see. Oh, it's soft on the skin. It feels like this. It feels like that. Okay, okay. Can you believe? Your thing cleared my, like I had this and this. It cleared my rash, your butter. And I'm like, oh, it's not even in its like final look. I have to say, Mm -hmm. I have so many friends who mm -hmm. have used your products and you've really helped them. What? You've really helped them. Thank so I'm you. like, oh, I need to know about this business. That's how it started. So and then I started using them on myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd use them on myself a lot because I had the time. And then I kind of thought, hmm, how I look like now? What would my enhanced like version if I had like really clearer skin? By then, there's that phase of... Uh, sun and I'd been out too much the stress mm -hmm. had the rush so like rush ashy ish, and yeah mm -hmm. ashy and then I started using them on myself and I thought wow there was that point in, a, in my pregnancy where I thought I really didn't look like my problems I was glowy <laughs> and you know and it, I and I thought okay let me figure this out let me so give it a good shot how did shot. we come from soaps and a few products to 
the range you have now. The skin types. Yes. Whenever something would work for someone, they would want the bat, like, let's say if a soap worked, they would want what they smeared after. They would always say, I don't want to now start using another thing and then ah. I either go, I become worse or I ruin where I am. Like I would now trust you to make me the other, the moisturizer. I don't want to use the cleanser, then it has worked, the soap has worked. That means you would know whatever you put in here. Okay. I need its moisturizer too. So that's how. Then another person would come and their skin maybe was not like yours or mine. Theirs was like proper acne prone. And then they, you, they need something slightly stronger that may not work for you or me. Mm -hmm. And then there we go again. Right. You're formulating now for that person. So that's why you have the them. packages exactly. and all the products for different. Yes. Because that's also the thing. That's how it is. You almost the same product does not work for all skin it, types. Yes. For all different people. Yes. Okay. So mm -hmm. I thought, hmm, okay. Then you're reading on literally each person's skin and then trying to see what are their ingredients and then who would most likely benefit from that, who mm -hmm. wouldn't. Who then, then there's this things where now you have that general information of which hazel. It's good, but it's so reactive to so many people. Like mm -hmm. it's one of those volatile, it may be a miss or a hit. Yes. Then you're like, most people have, seem to have issues with witch hazel. So you, it's a good ingredient, but you can't use it. Then you look for the equivalent that is safer, that is nicer, that is more this like that. Then you keep on, keep on. And by then Yuri was closed. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't train, get into their training program. So I had to teach myself. All right. And then also getting into the program is a little bit, you know, it's not just like you send in an application and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. They select a select number every, I think, year or yes. something like yes. that. Yes. And I thought, okay, the chances. And then I don't want to wait. Already my life is like moving. Baby's coming, this is coming, this is going to change. And I kept thinking, maybe when, baby, when my baby comes, my life is over, Lord. <laughs> So I just kept thinking, oh God, I need that's to... that's so true when you're yes. so used to being you, busy. I, I, yeah, I would be and like... And hustling, you're like, when I have a child, what's going to happen? Like, it's like another apocalypse of sorts where you, uh, you're alone, you're figuring this out, it's a new journey. And, and then I didn't want to mother while... <sighs> like, at that level of stress and pressure. Yeah. I felt like once the baby comes, why I thought my life would be over is because I physically thought... I am not going to, am I really going to be able to do all this? So I have to figure it out now. But am you I do know that was this? also the pregnancy, bringing all the emotions yeah, with I, the hormones. Sometimes you think you're like incapacitated or you think you're going to be like, uh, like you think you're disabled mm -hmm. when you're pregnant. Yeah. It's like, I don't know if it's a survival where you, you almost, you're almost afraid to do too much, even though the body can handle extreme pressure and extreme situations and it's equipped to do that but True. i think it also all starts here so i thought i used to just be like what my life is going to be oh, how am i going to do this i was that chick with the baby carrier he's here and i'm reading okay 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 <laughs> i go i formulate when he's here because if he's walking around who knows what he may get into mm -hmm. so i'm like oh moving so be with off. mommy Mommy can walk. Yes, you know how they sleep when you're walking? I just took advantage of that. You be here, after he's breastfed, you know how the boys are. A bottle, two. I was when he was a little bit older. Put here, I'm walking, doing all my things. And then he's down for the nap. I check, we're down, really, we are down. I'll do the whole, not waking up, not waking up. Okay, unbuckle him, put him down. I know I have two hours of extreme don't no one bother me so how did you come up with the name 180, 180. degree glow is it yes uh -huh. i thought like the degree how 180 is at first i was going to call it um 360 mm -hmm. but i thought it shouldn't be able to change you completely mm. like oh, okay. 360 where you're like from black to white or something i thought 180 is like a perfect curve for your skincare yeah. it should not make you do a 360 okay it mm -hmm. should enhance what and who you already are but organically and safely so even that curve shouldn't move too too far mm -hmm. too fast okay. too fast or too far so that's how it came up where your skin could do a 180 and just have it you know it just it's just enhanced and looks really good look at you <laughs> selling again eh? breaking it down nicely so when did you like properly launch? It was October the year before, mm -hmm. but we had already started selling around May 
Uh, but I hadn't yet fully. I, I was still thinking, how will this? Will this maybe I need to? First so we're add. two years into this brand. Yes. Two years into the brand. Yes. Okay. So why did you decide now is the time for the wellness bar? Because the clients were asking for their certain um, services that do go well with skincare to enhance the products you use every day. Mm -hmm scrubbing and exfoliating and uh, cleaning your pores may not be something you can do very extensively with let's say the toner that I provide mm -hmm. in the one in the skincare package yeah. because it's safe enough for everyday use but sometimes skin needs like to jump start yeah, a it. deep cleanser yeah mm -hmm. and then have these things done a little deeper than the everyday cleanser the everyday exfoliant yeah you need like a little more um, like a push and this is how the spa comes in because for some clients also, like for example, the oily acne prone, mm -hmm. they develop the sebum in the pores much quicker, at a quicker rate than other skin types. Yes. So sometimes doing a deep cleaning of the skin and the pores helps the products work better because the product quantities and the percentages are, are safe enough for everyday usage. Yes. But you That's find the one like, thing you, you keep, yeah. Yes, but then you, you don't find need something that, strong. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But you find that she does need the strong one. But I can't make a, 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 ton, a green tea toner that's for crystal. Then I make a green tea toner that's for like patients. Like now we, that category mm -hmm. needs a spa where yes. the treatments are deeper. Mm -hmm. Then the everyday usage remains the same because you can't customize to that degree where everybody has like their type of toner. Right. Their type of, you'd have to make safe. Okay, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, so that that's what the sense. spa is for, is that we'll do a little more like deeper treatments mm -hmm. and more extensive, which we can't sell. But you have a bigger range of services as well. At the spa, yes, we have mm -hmm. the J-shows, mm -hmm. we have the waxing, which I think we the encourage. The J-shows are very new. A yes, lot of people are like, what? Uh -huh. We have the J-shows, we have the waxing, the massages, the body, full body scrubs. Uh, under the facials, there are quite a couple of them, mm -hmm. depending on what issue you have. Some just need maintenance facials, mm -hmm. others need maybe those that are extraction where they remove the blackheads, others need more brightening, mm. enzymes. So we are more, we customize at least the services according to the skin type. Okay, so you'd say it's like a beauty and wellness spa. Yeah, it's a beauty and wellness spa. Okay, so where is it? It's still at the shop, at the hub. Okay. In the showroom. All right. we, have a, we had a room that was not being used that much, so I thought, why wouldn't we start it there? And mm -hmm. then if the business does well or if it grows, which we project for it to grow, then we can always you make know? it bigger. Expand. Yeah. So for the spa, I actually had a, a lady who was doing counseling already in the showroom who does uh, couples counseling and therapy. And I came to her and I thought, hmm, my clients keep asking me about a spa. But clearly, my hand is in so many cookie jars. What if we did the spa together, the spa bit together? And you have a lot of female clients, so you would be really good at that. She, and I think she can offer the, uh, in her, during her counseling, she does offer vaginal health mm -hmm. tips and well, also for women, uh, different things under that banner as well that she's already been handling. And I thought, there's way more we could do with the spa also, as opposed to just come, do the scrub, da, 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 go. Mm. We could offer women real, real answers to certain things, how to, you know, keep your pH balanced. You don't have to resort to these, I don't know. Weird soaps and exactly, things. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like some things are an issue of hygiene, some things are an issue of your menstruation, some things are uh, as a byproduct of sex or if how many sexual partners do you have like someone who can have these actual real talks mm -hmm. and guidance on how to keep yourself clean and i thought since you've been handling these people what if we had a place where women can come to and have some talks about this mm -hmm. so we can partner and then you offer that too because that's maybe not my area of expertise but for her she's a certified counselor and i thought Okay. How about if we did this together? So some serious consultation. Yes, yes. On female health. Exactly. Really. Mm -hmm. So she said, oh, I would love that. What would the spa need? I was like, okay, so I could make the products. They'll still be under, there'll still be 180 products being used. Mm -hmm. But the quantities, that will be something I can handle. But then I would really love it to be more than just uh, a facial or this or that. Someone that, that, I would love to offer way more than that. Because with her, we'd also try to do something called sack of support where people could come and have um, like counseling, they weren't counseling, they were more of like venting sessions where you come <laughs> and you vent 
once a month. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And you have a counselor present who can give each of us tools on how to manage our stress and different Whatever things. Whatever it like, is you're dealing yes, with. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So I thought, huh, what if we adopted that idea and then put it in the spa, but it could be more slightly more private. We'll mm. think about doing group sessions for the vaginal health, but for now, I think people may want to first tackle it privately. Mm -hmm. There may be so many things people could ask. So we decided, will it be for men and women or just women? Mm. And then we thought, no, let's have it for women. But on the vaginal health and counseling, that she could do a, either the woman with comes in partner. alone or she comes with her partner. Uh -huh. Yeah, not the, the other way around, the men and yes, everything. Yes, yeah. yes. So if the ladies come no, to me, there are certain conversations that young men don't have. Like you exactly. have to keep yourself clean or you can give or your you woman infections. Be, someone needs to tell him he's the one most likely reinfecting or infecting uh -huh. this woman that, that she may not be able to communicate, yet she's the one who is going to be carrying the infection. Dealing most with likely. the infection, yes. So we thought, okay, we'll have women and couples, mm. meaning the woman at some point has to progress to being able to bring in her partner because mm. this is something they'll both be dealing with inevitably or are already dealing with yes. inevitably. Yes, yes. Then if there are women who want to just find out certain things alone individually, then that's what we also want to offer in the mm. spa as well. So a proper, yeah, a proper like deep cleanse and not just the face and the skin, but even a couple of mental health, whichever it is. So overall so, wellness. Yes, overall wellness. That's interesting and different. Mm -hmm. and very different. Wow, Susan. <laughs> so do you feel like now you're able to be busy and creative and hustle and the way you want to? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I really, really but do. I have I a feel feeling like you still even want more. You yeah, uh -huh. I do. I do. I do. I want so many things. But I think I feel like now I'm more well-rounded in who I am. Then I was figuring out business and who I was. Hmm. I would say it has taken the two COVID strikes to really know what I'm good at and my strengths mm -hmm. and work with them. Okay. And do that for the rest of my life. Whether I'm selling tomatoes, bananas, I'll give it my best shot. <laughs> then um, I think trying, I, I think at a point, the entrepreneurship journey was very complicated because I was still also figuring out myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there was a lot of uncertainty. Yes. And what everyone thought I should be, also th there were things I thought I should probably be. Yeah. And they were either not it, or I needed my time to figure it out my way, at my pace. But now I feel more settled. Even when I come in and things are crazy, I know at the end of the day, I'm going to figure this out. I'll probably do it. <laughs> no, so you've I dealt feel... with real crisis before yes. and you came out on the other yeah. side. So I feel like, yeah, I'm good to go. That's good. That's mm. really, really good. Excited for you. I'm sure there's so Thank much you. more there coming is. your way. And yeah. the fact that you, I still feel like, you know, you wanted to open a wellness bar uh, back then. Yes. And it took all these years for you to be ready. Thank you. For you to have the right foundation. Exactly. So, Otherwise, yeah. how would I have dealt with the ladies? Because you know, you ladies are very different from men. Huh? <laughs> yes. Oh. Which is why you ran away from us in the first place. <laughs> like, no, no, no. I'm going I to deal with men. I'm going to deal with for men. For sure, yes, yes. I feel like lady, you need... It's very hard because ladies are also good bullshit detectors. Eh? Mm -hmm. They're not like how you just sell something to go and she's, oh, she's pretty and they just lost in your... Oh, okay. <laughs> You had to go there. Like, okay, okay. For them, it's more like, what does it do? How? Mm -hmm. Why? When? Why can I use it every day? The instruction says use it twice a day. But what if I use it for three? What does it do to me? Mm -hmm. Like, you literally need to, and you can't be the, uh, let me get back to you. Uh, and also, already, to get a woman to part with her money. Exactly. Eh? You must, she must be sure. Yes, she must be sure. So I thought, hmm. Okay, mm. but one of the things I think I've also heard from you just talking is you've learned that you can't have everything now, 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 now. Mm. That's mm. the thing. Mm. It takes mm. time. It does. It and takes you, time. And, and patience, and you have, to, you have to learn to back, like just, I think all that stressing where I should have stopped, given myself moments, I realize now I could have. I had the power. Was, what have. were you going to do to me? Beat me? <laughs> 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 Cannot beat me, but 
I you had the set power. standards for yourself yes, where you I feel like, like to deliver, but but yes, to take care of yourself. Yes, it shouldn't be my my god. I have one. Mm -hmm. And this ain't it. It's not yeah. your five hundred K please. <laughs> like I I should have trusted myself enough to know that I am good at what I do, mm. but I will need a moment. Yeah. And this is not the moment. This moment I have given birth, my phone is off. Yeah. Okay? I've this is just not it. had a baby. I sh everyone should have known I'm off first of all for two weeks. I can just literally start beginning. I can start picking up the phone calls after the two weeks. Yeah. Then after that, I can get into where to allocate your things, where you can pick them from. But the, the, I let the fear and the pressure and the stress succumb. I succumbed to it so bad. You let it control you. Yes, that right now, every time I think about the fact the day that doctor gave me to come in and have the and baby. And you wanted to push went, for a week? And I went to work. Even cleaned <laughs> and put everyone labels. <laughs> And I, I, saw, I saw my time, I had my lunch. Then at four, I said, whoops, I'm supposed to be at the hospital, driving the hospital at five. And my friends, I said, where are you? I'm coming. And then I parked, locked, looked around one more time. Like, that was just crazy. And then we drove. I went home. I'm glad looking back, yeah, you I'm know like, that was crazy. That was crazy. I should not have let the fear get to me to that degree yeah but it's also i think for you to figure out who you really are these moments happen like it's like you can't run away from them but when you do oh my for any entrepreneur out there you have to be above you have to be above your mental health has to be above the job it's yeah. when you're like in it it feels like you just can't let go it's not going to happen if you don't do this it's everything is running around you too much. You're scared. Then you want to deliver. Then you want to be taken seriously. Yeah. You want to be good at your job because everyone who comes in will begin with, are you going to be like that? No, Matela, who did it? And then you let it get to you. You should not let, there's a line where certain things, not like that guy who I should have just who said that. Who you. Yeah. Actually, I'm not even refunding your money because that's a lawsuit. Yeah, how dare but you speak to me like that? Exactly, that, 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 like I should have and not felt like, why would this guy abuse me? Why would I shouldn't have even internalized people's? Mm -hmm. There's a tendency to internalize because also it's your that your business is like your baby. So you're taking in all the anger and the frustration exactly. and the, well. Yet there should be a mental mm -hmm. space where that doesn't. It should. There's nothing that should I think get you to a point that you self-sacrifice. Because if you're not there, it's still going to die. Well said. So you have to sustain yourself to sustain the business. It's just going to die either way because you'll burn out or you'll just completely abandon the idea or ba abandon it altogether and just be done with it. So either way, it's not going to work. Yeah, mm. good point. Well, Susan, thank you so much. You're welcome. For joining me. Oh, my goodness. Very exciting journey. Thank you. Pleasure having you. Oh, I'm honored. Mm -hmm. oh, when you called me, I was like, what? Yeah, I'll be there. And now I'm looking forward to my consultation okay. for my skin. <laughs> but thank you so much. You're um, welcome.